Our next talk is by Dr. Siddharth Dixit. He is going to speak on applications of AI in glaucoma screening and diagnosis. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Amit, for this cool topic in this hot weather. I will be talking about uh, artificial intelligence and its role in glaucoma screening and diagnosis. Now, if you look, start looking up literature on this, you will see 50 articles published this year and you'll see 100 review articles published on the same topic. So there's so much literature, there's so much information coming in, which means there is something happening there. And there is something more bound to happen, but because there is so much to listen to, so much to uh, see, it might be a muddle. What I will try to do during this talk is to unclutter what you are seeing, not hide behind numbers, but just present the crux of it and try to understand what, where we can be and what we need to do in order to catch this train before it goes ahead. Now, ideally, we would want an artificial intelligence software or machine or robot to take in all the printouts and just give, up, give us the results like a lab test will do. You have diabetes, you don't have diabetes. You have severe diabetes or, or you have uh, mild to moderate diabetes. Do everything for us. But are we there? Now, if you look, try to look at this fundus image, I'm focusing very close to the phobia. Can any one of uh, us confidently say whether this is glaucoma or not? Now, let us zoom out a little bit. Try to look at this again. Can we confidently say now that there is a glaucoma in this eye or not? Let me zoom out a little bit more. And once you look at this disc, look at this excavation, look at this nerve fiber layer defect inf in inferiorly, and you zoom in again, that nerve fiber layer defect is visible. Now, what was not visible very clearly at the outset, once we start paying attention to it, and we have more information, we can start seeing it. And it is not, sorry, I went in the wrong direction. And it is not only us, look at this OCT, GCIPL map, which has been seeing at it, looking at it and presenting it for many, many years now. So sometimes what we see even on a disc photograph on retinal examination, it may not be enough and there may be technology which may be superior to our own judgment, even if we are experienced examiners. This is an image of a relatively earlier glaucoma. Here, even if you look at the fundus image, that to a red-free image, it's very difficult to make out any difference. And we see technology does better here. So it is possible that if you apply the right technology, they might see more than what we are seeing. Let us look at some examples. Now, I don't want you to go through all these tables, and it is a torture for anyone who would want to sit here. But I would want you to just focus on these three columns. Now, if you look at these columns, what you can understand is that the artificial intelligence, when it looks at disk photos, they have sensitivity and specificity above 90% or very close to 90% in all the cases. This is really amazing. So if you present, a, a, say, a resident or a fellow with, say, 500 disk photographs, and if 250 are glaucoma and they pick up 225 and 230, you say very good. But we don't say that when we look at a... Uh, artificial intelligence software. The area under the curve here is very, very uh, important to look at. It basically means that 95% or more of the glaucomas are being picked up by these patients at a high specificity rate. Similar data on optical coherence tomography suggests a slightly variable but still a good uh, correlation, uh, good sensitivity and specificity uh, for picking up glaucoma with a significant accuracy. Accuracy ranges 90% or more. Specificity and in, AS, in OCT is a problem that we know does exist. So the, ASOCT, the AI for OCT also does not have a very good specificity because OCT itself does not have a very good specificity. And these are when they start looking at multiple modalities and not just one single printout. So if they start, you start looking at disk parameters and visual fields, 
OCT and visual fields, you are likely to improve the accuracy. And we see here in some studies, the accuracies are as good as, is, is as good as 98%. And there is an improvement in sensitivity and specificity for most studies. Now, why, there is, why is there such a huge variation between all of these? Because the software that each of these studies have is very different and indigenously developed. So if we say AI is good, we cannot infer that from multiple trials. We'll have to say that the AI developed by Kim et al. seems to be, AI model developed by Kim et al. seems to be very promising. And let us look at it, let us try more on this. What we also need to know is that when AI says that the patient has glaucoma, what will happen when you go from a study group to the population? So the, in typical study groups, you have a 50% prevalence of glaucoma. So for a AI test or machine learning model, which has sensitivity and specificity of 97, 98%, with a prevalence of glaucoma uh, at 50%, uh, if you change that prevalence to 4% without changing the population of 10,000, the sensitivity, the positive predictive value will drop to 50%. So if the, even if the AI says with that lower prevalence that the patient has a disease, the positive predictive value drastically drops. And if you increase the population to 1 lakh, the positive predictive value becomes comes to single digits. So that test is not yet done. We have to wait for these excellent machine learning models to go into the population and then show us what the result is. Now, is there a reason to be scared? Of all the multiple modalities that we see in glaucoma, we all have different capabilities of looking and picking up, picking up glaucoma findings from the disc. We have trust issues with OCT. But I am quite sure the modality that we are most confident with is visual fields. Now, when you have compared artificial intelligence with visual fields, in all manners, in all ways, whether it is uh, picking up uh, glaucoma, diagnosing, differentiating between the two, being more accurate, having higher sensitivity and specificity, or detecting progression earlier. The AI has performed better than glaucoma specialists. And if you look at this figure from a very recent uh, article, now this is slightly confusing, but what I can tell you, the more... Uh, the study goes towards the top left corner, the better it is. So it will have a very high sensitivity. That means it picks up all the glaucomas without a high false positive rate. And if you look at AI, it's a spread. So we can't say that all machine learning models, all AI models are excellent, but there are some which are very good. And there is reason to believe that there is something good that is going to happen. And this is very interesting. This is a device that we have worked with, with Dr. Ganesh uh, and the group have worked with. And it shows that just a mobile phone photograph can help you pick up glaucoma, which is very much in correlation with what the clinician does. So if you see a lot of crowding near the central regression line in both these graphs, you will see that the, all the points that the machine has uh, picked up, they are very close to the central line. So there is a good correlation for diagnosing the, or uh, for the assessment of cup disc ratio. And this is the device that I'm talking about. There is no financial interest uh, with this company, but we have worked with it and it seems very, very promising. Where can we be? Can we go to a mall, buy a burger, and while that burger is getting ready, go to a kiosk, get a fundus photograph done and be told whether you have glaucoma or not, whether you have diabetic retinopathy or not, whether you have ARMD or not, with a single click. I don't think that day is very far uh, because there are huge commercial interests that are being involved. We cannot stop it from happening. So it is our responsibility to pick up the right players who will set up that kiosk in a mall close to your home. But that's not just it. Can you imagine a lot of us have 
vision centers in remote areas. And they typically go put in a vision chart in front of a patient and ask them to read a line. And they typically pick up cataracts or advanced glaucomas, advanced corneal pathologies. But instead of the torch, if they can shine a smartphone onto the patient's eye, and even if there is a false positive rate of 50%, have high sensitivity of picking up all the patients who have a significant ocular disease, we will be at such a huge advantage of accessing all the rural population in the entire country. Now, how do we reach there? Or oh, just 30 seconds. Yeah. So we have to be data ready. Why is the West climbed onto this bandwagon? Because they have collected all the data for their patients. And we have to be ready to collaborate. And as Shahrukh Khan would like, Shahrukh Khan would like to say, open your arms. Otherwise, uh, you will uh, end up saying, uh, kuch kuch hota hai, tum nahi Rahul. Thank you.